Hi, my name is Paul and welcome to Physics High and please remember, hit that subscribe button. Today I want to give you an overview of what Waves is all about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up a bit of a concept map that basically looks at the various aspects of Waves. Now I'm not going to go into great detail on each of the terms. I have numerous videos where you can explore the various concepts at greater detail. So let's get started with our key term, Waves. And a wave is in essence a disturbance that is traveling usually through a medium which is moving energy from point A to point B. We're going to be looking at three different aspects of waves and the first is the features. We're going to be also be looking at the types and lastly we're going to be looking at the behaviors. Now the first aspect we're going to be looking at in terms of waves is how we measure the actual wave and there are a number of terms that you should become familiar with. The first is the wavelength, then there's this something that's related to its time, which could either be the, its frequency or its period. And then there's also the aspect of the amplitude. Now, when we combine the frequency and the wavelength, in other words, we have a distance here and a frequency, which is a time relationship here, that leads us to the concept of the fact that the wave automatically have a speed associated with it. The amplitude also gives an indication of the concept of the energy of the wave the amplitude, which also connects to the idea of the intensity of the wave, relates to the energy. But later on, you might also discover that the frequency itself actually is related to its energy, and that relates specifically to the quantum nature of waves. Now let's have a look at the types of waves. Now, generally speaking, most texts refer to three types of waves, though sometimes there's a bit of an overlap with another type of wave. And let me explain. The most common type of wave that we often talk about is the transverse wave, where the particles are moving perpendicular to the direction of the wave. We also have the longitudinal wave, and the longitudinal wave is where the particles are moving in the same direction as the direction of the energy or of the wave. But then there's also a torsional wave, where the particles are actually moving a, a rotational fashion and yet perpendicular to the direction of the wave. And then we also have a fourth type, which is often referred to as a surface wave. And this is a sort of wave that you might see in the ocean, where the particles are moving in terms of a longitudinal at a lower level, but they're also providing some sort of circular motion along the same plane of the wave. And so in essence, these are different types of waves, and all these different types of waves have these properties of the frequency, wavelength, amplitude, energy, and speed, and therefore. Now, all of these types of, types of waves can be describing types of waves as they travel through a medium. So often refer also these to as mechanical waves. That is, these are waves that need a medium to travel through. Now, up until the end of the 19th century, the understanding is that waves always require a medium. But we now know that's not correct with the advent of Maxwell's understanding of electromagnetism. And so what we also have is the idea of electromagnetic radiation, which is a transverse wave, but it's not mechanical. That is, it does not need a medium to travel through. And in this case, the wave is actually an off-fluctuating electric and magnetic field. But now we have a differentiation between mechanical waves and non-mechanical waves, and specifically, it's the electromagnetic radiation. Now, in terms of electromagnetic radiation, we classify electromagnetic radiation according to its frequency and or its wavelength. In other words, the changing the wavelength changes the frequency because they all have the same speed and therefore we can classify them. And as a result, radio waves, for example, is a type of electromagnetic wave that has a very long wavelength and a very slow frequency. At the other end of the spectrum, so to speak, we also have gamma radiation, which is a very high frequency in a very small wavelength. Now associated with this is also the concept that when we specifically look at light, when we look up their frequencies, then that relates to the concept of color. So for example, if you want to understand the nature of color, that is actually related to the frequency of an electromagnetic wave that is in this case in our visible range of the spectrum. I now want to explore the behaviors of the waves that we are dealing with, and we're going to explore five of them. The first is reflection, then there's refraction, we also have diffraction, then we have interference, and lastly, we'll look at polarization. Now let's explore those briefly. Reflection, of course, is where a wave encounters a different medium and the wave bounces off, so to speak. That's reflection. 
When we have refraction, we have the wave passing through the medium and it changes in some way. It changes in terms of its direction and it can change also, of course, in terms of its wavelength and its speed. We have diffraction, which is where the wave encounters a medium and as a result, it bends around that particular medium. Interference is when we have two waves and they interfere with each other, either constructively or destructively. And polarization is related to the idea that a wave has various planes and when they pass through a material that is polarized, a certain plane is removed out of that and we get this sort of polarization effect. Now related to refraction, we can explore that a little bit further. A concept of dispersion. So for example, when we fire light into a prism, we can actually cause it to refract, but because different frequencies refract at different angles, we can disperse it. And that relates to Newton's understanding that light can be spread up into its different colors, the rainbow effect basically, but it's an aspect of refraction. In refraction, we can also talk about the concept of lenses. So how do lenses work? Well, they work due to refraction. But in this case, we are bringing the light to a point, to a focus, so to speak. And of course, our eyes rely on the principle of refraction. But specifically, you want to be studying the concept of how lenses work and how image formation works. Then there is also the concept of total internal reflection. That is actually a property of refraction, but you can see now what we have is also this concept of reflection going on, but in essence it's basically where light bounces back into a substance, where it, it's unable to refract out of the substance. And then finally we can look at the mathematical of that, and that's Snell's law, which basically looks at the relationship between the angle it's coming in, the angle that it's passing through, and the different refractive substances. In other words, how the speed of light changes within that substance. And that's called Snell's law. Let's explore diffraction. Well, diffraction, as I said, is related to the light bending around it. So for example, if you have a wave at the ocean and it hits a brick wall, you might find the wave goes around it. If you stand outside a brick wall and yet you can hear someone speaking, let's say, on the other side, it's because that the sound is diffracting around that wall. I now want to look quickly at interference. Now there's a whole number of aspects of interference that you could explore. The first is the concept of beats. So particularly in terms of sound, if you have two frequencies that are very similar, but only out by, let's say, one or two hertz, when you hear them together, they interfere in such a way that you get this changing amplitude. That's called beats. And that is a basically a, pro a property of interference. We also have the concept of standing waves. Now, standing waves is a situation where we have what we achieve as, as resonance. That is, we have a wave that appears to be standing still, but really what's happening is you've got two waves that have a particular frequency so that when they interfere, produce these areas of maxima and minima. We have what looks like a stationary wave, but in essence, it's a property of interference. And then we have the concept of interference where we get interference patterns. And interference patterns is often in a situation where we have interference taking place, but also diffraction taking place. So let's say we have two slits and we have two waves passing through, they will Dis they will diffract through those particular slits, but then they will interfere with each other, and that produces a series of maxima and minima, constructive and destructive interference, and that again is a concept related to interference. Well, I hope that has given you a bit of an introduction to the concept of waves. Now, this is by no means complete, but at least it will give you a basis to start off with, or if you've looked at waves already, a, a summary of what waves is all about. And remember, I have quite a number of videos that explore these concepts to much greater details. Please remember to like, share and subscribe and push the bell to get my latest updates. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.